my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek at Comic Con at Home. I am joined by Sean Brown from Mr. B Games. How are you doing, Sean? I'm good, Beth. How are you? Excellent. I can see I, I happened to say jokingly go Broncos before we went live, but <laughs> obviously you're very happy about that. <laughs> um, I am excited that you guys have finally gotten stacked. Uh, you got you did a preview of this when it was still in prototype form back in 2017 with Mr. Eric Martin. Um, do you remember that? That might have been another universe ago. <laughs> I'm gonna just nod and pretend I heard every word you just said. <laughs> okay, well, obviously having some technical difficulties with Sean, so. I will give him a, a hang on and we will attempt to problem solve this. And so we're going to no, pause. On I can our hear interview. you perfectly. You can hear me. Okay. Are you just yeah, joking, sure. joshing with me? <laughs> sure. <laughs> While we're, <laughs> oh, poor John. Uh, it, While it wouldn't we're be an interview his... with you, Beth, if things didn't go awesomely perfect, right? That's right. <laughs> we will try and get that sorted. And I'm going to message him real quick so he knows. Hang in there. <laughs> um, so I will just kind of fill in people too. So you don't have to see us sitting in silence while we're figuring this out. But uh, if you guys are just joining us today is the second day of coverage for Comic-Con online or excuse me, Comic-Con at home. My my apologies. Um, and if you wanted to watch our feed, it's available both on the BGG channel on Twitch, that's twitch.tv slash boardgamegeek, um, or you can also watch us on boardgamegeek.com slash live. And that actually has the full schedule. You can see who the last interview was, you can see what the current interview is, you can see what's coming up next. So. Um, that it might be a, a good place to go. It also has links to all the games that we're showing today. So if you wanted to go look up the BGG page, that might be a great resource for you. If you're like, what is this? What was that one that was just on? Uh, you have that all at your fingertips. So some people didn't realize if you're looking at the video and you start watching right away and you're on BGG and you're watching this, just scroll down a little bit further and that will have the full schedule for all four days. Uh, and then all the links to the games so you can go immediately to their game page as well. So I'm going to check in and see how our sound situation is doing. I'm good. I can hear everything. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. It, it's fixed. It's magic and we're good. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. Yep, we will do. Hi, my name is Beth Hivey here for Board Game Geek here at Comic Con. Com <laughs> Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek at Comic Con at home, and I am joined by Sean Brown, the owner and founder of Mr. B Games. Hello, Sean. Hi, Beth. How are you? I'm excellent. So nice to hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I know we should have um, just been leaving Origins a few weeks ago, and we should be. Going to Indianapolis next weekend. Right. But now I'm sitting in my socks. So, you know, there is that. <laughs> Light goals. Um, Light goals. <laughs> I know, right? I am really delighted that you are here to a demo Stacked because this was actually an interview that you did with Eric Martin back in 2011. Uh, when you still had <laughs> prototype pieces, like uh, 3D printed pieces. So I'm I'm thrilled that you were finally able to get this to print. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, Tim and Leanne are the primary designers of it. And they just uh, they made a lovely game. And we've just been trying and trying and trying. And we just kept working on it. And we said, one of these days, we're going to get it. We're going to get it right. And we're just going to do it. And uh, lo and behold, a pandemic hit. And I had a lot of time on my hands. And so we just decided to finish it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and originally when you had demoed it three years ago, it was mostly a, a combo of a trick-taking game and a stacking a dexterity game, but now there's a lot of other different flavors that you can all get in the same box, correct? Yes, we actually, um, that's ultimately why we designed decided to go with three designers on the game was, uh, you know, Tim had kind of in his mind how it worked. 
And then his wife, Leanne, had, oh, I like it this way. And they kind of couldn't decide or agree. And I loved both of their versions. And then I was the one that was like, couldn't we put a trick-taking game in here? And everybody was like, you're crazy. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, we couldn't decide, well, you know, what should be the default? Like, how do you play? What should be the way? Mm -hmm. Like, when you open the box, what's the way to play? And I kind of came up with this idea of, why don't we just put three game modes and we just tell you, pick one, because we all like them. So that's what we did. Well, and I know all of these are really easy to pick up, so I'm hoping we can actually go through all three. Uh, so I will yeah, leave it to you. So that was to, kind of my thought, you, was which... I would start you guys off with the third game in the list, which is the C mode, which is follow the leader. Um, and it's just a super simple little game. Uh, all three games start the same way. You take the deck, which is shuffled. Um, and I don't know if Link's already pre-done that or that looks like Nikki's hand. It could be, could be Link's hand. Um, but we would pre-shuffle or, you know, just shuffle the deck. And then depending on how difficult right. you wanted the game, um, you'll make a base to start stacking the tower on. So because these are experienced professional gamers here between <laughs> Link and Nikki, um, we'll draw two cards. <laughs> and we'll kind of see how that goes. Hey, look, Tim's here, maybe. Tim is finally here. <laughs> we were, I'm just uh, getting him started on building a base, Tim. So I'll let you jump in on the next uh, game design. here. Uh, please do while I'm still trying to figure out how to see everybody. I've got you, but I can't see anyone else yet. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so Nikki is shuffling up this deck for us. And then she's going to deal two cards, um, just face up so we can see what they are. And... Uh, so it looks like a terrible shuffle. <laughs> yeah, there we, there we go. Pretend, um, pretend repair. <laughs> pretend shuffle. So uh, she would grab a um, block for each of those cards that are visually shown on, on, the, uh, on the cards there. So the little uh, small L shape in yellow and the long straight there in green. And then what you're going to do is lay them flat and put them together in some type of fashion that gives you the most space, exactly, just like that. Uh, now in the future, every time you play a block card, you're going to play it onto that base somewhere. So if you touch the table, it'll actually have to touch uh, that actual block. <laughs> and so that's basically how, like I said, every game setup is gonna be that way. If you're playing with new players, you could deal three cards and make that base a little bigger. You could even deal four cards if you want to make it, you know, nice and big. I've never but I really like shape. that you never know what shape the base is going to be either. So, like, that adds a lot of variability from play to play as well. Absolutely. You might uh, you might draw yeah. four straight greens like that, and then all of a sudden you have you know, a really terrible base. So, <laughs> <laughs> Are we all playing to... That would never to... happen on a live feed. Are we all playing to the same base in this version, or are we building our own tower in this You'll version? We'll play on the same base. That's okay. Fine. So then the idea would be is that uh, first player would place any block that they would like onto this tower in any kind of configuration. The only rule being, of course, that it doesn't touch the table. And, uh, you know, we put little things in the rules, like if you want to challenge, you can limit people to just using one hand, that kind of stuff. Okay, and then um, the next player, in this case would be Link, um, would have to use the same color or the same shape as the previous player, uh, and then they can kind of go on from there. And so you could do this by drawing cards. You could deal out hand cards to each other and do that, or you could simply just do this on a color block draw kind of basis. And we do this one oh, a lot of times touch with younger the table, people. Though. Um, kids, nieces, nephews. Oh, that's still off the table. That would work. Oh, oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to have the overhead view of watching this building. Yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> seen it directly looking down. So <laughs> <laughs> And then you would continue to do this basically until somebody couldn't get one to fit or the, the tower tumbled over. And then at that point, uh, you know, you could say a hey, game over and you could try a new game. 
Um, there's lots of ways. We have uh, multiple ways to end the game. You can say, hey, when the tower falls over twice, you can play to a certain number of points. You can play to a time limit. So the idea was something that um, you could play filler if you wanted to, or you could even get into in depth uh, a little bit longer. So that's kind of the, the basic foundation. And I'll let uh, Tim explain to you how to do these second variants. All right, which one, sir, do you want to do? Um, so I was just kind of doing the, uh, the showing them the basic uh, kind of draw and play file, follow. The, follow the leader? Uh, yeah. Okay, and you, so you want me to do draw and play? Sure. All right. Hey, guys, so draw and play, what happened was um, several years ago, I'd taken the game to my mom's house for Christmas, and there were a bunch of five- and six-year-olds that wanted to play. And I knew I didn't have time to teach them how to play trick-taking games. So we came up with the draw and play method. And it's, it's fairly simple, really. What you'll do is you shuffle the cards. You set the draw pile in the center of the table. You reach over, you draw the top card, and you take whatever block is being depicted on that card and add it to the tower. Um, after you add the block, you place the card in your play pile because you'll score the points in the bottom right-hand corner. And then whoever's next, they'll draw the card and go on. Uh, we've added a rule so that if you can have younger kids and older kids in there, when the subsequent player goes, they cannot place a, they cannot touch a block of the color of the preceding player. So, for instance, if I was playing and I played a red straight and I had at the tower and Sean was next, when Sean draws his card, he gets that block, but he cannot touch any red blocks on the tower. Uh, the only exception to that is if there's no other place to go. Um, and if all players agree that it's impossible, if you played four or five red blocks in a row, there's no other place to go, then you can waive that rule. But otherwise, they have to try to place the block on the tower where there's no red. Play continues to go, again, until you hit one of your predetermined victory conditions, which you get to choose at the beginning of the game. Uh, most of the time, we just end up playing just whoever has the most points when the tower falls. Uh, that gives you a good 15 to 30 minute game, and um, you set them up and run again. We find most of the time, even people don't even care how many points they make because they just don't want to be the person to knock the tower over. <laughs> and then so my as personal long as favorite. You're not the loser, I'm... you're the winner. That's right. <laughs> And my personal favorite, because I'm a huge fan of trick-taking games. Um, Nikki, if you wouldn't mind leaving up that bottom blue and yellow just as the base of our tower, um, let's talk about the, yeah, let's talk about the uh, trick-taking variant. Yeah, so the, the way the trick-taking would work is you would deal everybody a hand of uh, seven cards, I believe it is. And, uh, and you could just kind of flip two piles just so we can kind of see, you know, or three piles. Um, and we, we do recommend this one you play with three to five players because, you know, really a two player trick taking game, not a ton of fun. Um, it can be done, <laughs> but there's a there's one specific rule in trick taking that you'll see why we like to have that third player. So um, basically how that would work is we'd start with, uh, you know, the youngest player, something like that, and they could play any card out of their hand. Now, these cards are numbered one through seven. So seven would be the highest numerical number for winning trick-taking purposes, but everybody would play a card simultaneously. So somebody might say something like, okay, we're going to play red, right? Because I'm the youngest player and we're going to start. And then we do like a countdown, like a three, two, one, and everybody's going to reveal a card that has to be red. Now, if you don't have a red card, you can slough off. You can throw something out there that you didn't want, that kind of thing. Um, but ideally, if you had a red card in your hand, everybody would want to reveal a red card. So now as Nikki's kind of thrown these cards out, um, let's see, there's a six and two threes. Is that what I see? Yep, and the six was played by the, the hand on the right. Okay, so the six would win the trick because it's the highest total. And so what that player would get to do is flip their card over onto the back side, and you'll notice there's five points on the back. So because they won the trick, they get to keep that in their point pile, flipped over for five points. More importantly, if you look at that card on the, on the face of it, um, there was a block, there was a red block, right? Whoever won that trick gets to give that 
long L block to any of the other players playing trick taking, and they have to put it on the tower for you. So not only do you win the trick, you also get a stiff your friend with the tower, <laughs> actually knocking over and losing the game. <laughs> we had an interesting scenario just there where two people tied and had it, you know, both threes. So if that situation would have occurred where we had two threes and say the other card was a one or a two, if there's ever a tie for the high, then those two people that tie cancel and the next highest wins the trick. Oh. <laughs> so there's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of strategy in there for you boys and girls at home. Would that also and, uh, be true if they were tied for the winner as well? Yeah, so if you if the the highest number is what's going to win the trick, but if there's a tie, those two are nullified and the winner becomes the next highest number. <laughs> And then whoever actually has the lowest number gets to lead the next trick. So they get to check, you know, they get to call the color. Now, I also and thought that, it was but, really clever what you did if you sloughed yeah. off a, an off color. Uh, I thought that the, the, your, the little twist you added on scoring was really interesting for that. Well, right, because um, if you look at the cards, the, the lower numbers that aren't good for winning tricks are good for points. So sloughing off on a color that maybe you had a bunch of, uh, you put a one down there, you get three points. Well, winning the trick gets you five. So, you know, sloughing off a low number still gets you points. Even though you played the card, it goes in your point. So just because you didn't win, I mean, you're not getting points. Well, it's an, an interesting yeah, twist to think about when you're sort of, you know, with a trick taking hand, it's very much sort of, what is the first couple cards I play versus what cards do I save to play last? And having that twist on the points, I think, makes those decisions really interesting from the beginning to the end. Absolutely. And there's two of every number. So that gets a little interesting too, right? There's mm. uh, every color of block is represented twice in every color. So you know, we might be playing blue and depending on where we are in the deck, maybe both blue sevens have been dealt, maybe they haven't. So that's also the thing is, do you want to go early? And, you know, well, the chances are we haven't dealt that many cards. Maybe it increases your uh, your chances there. Yeah, the real the real branch that I see in the trick-taking game from a strategy point, if you play your high cards early, you're going to win some tricks and score points. But the tower is not in real jeopardy of falling down at the beginning of the game. And at the end of the game, all you're going to have are the low cards. So your friends are going to be winning the tricks you're always going to have to be adding a block to the tower. And depending on how much your friends like you, you may have to add their blocks to the tower. If you save your cards to the end, then you will have a chance to win those tricks at the end. But if the tower falls over early before you play all your high cards, you lose the five points for each trick you could have won had you played those cards earlier. Now, how does the tower play into the trick-taking version? Is it just the signal of end of game when it comes tumbling down? So it, that depends on game length. So if you were playing a short game, uh, you would determine this before you started and you could say, hey, as soon as the tower is knocked over, we're ending the game. And at that point, you would just add up everybody's points uh, and whoever had the most points would win. The, the catch is the person that knocks over the tower only gets half of their points. Um, so we play the two knockovers, and what that'll do is you know, Tim might knock it over on the first round, I might knock it over on the second round, and it keeps the scores really close and interesting. How long do you think the trick-taking version would take you? I, I mean, per build and collapse, I should say. Uh, you know, if you're playing even with a full five players, maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, probably the longest game I played, and it was one of the few where we actually successfully put all 56 blocks on the tower. Um, wow. Probably between <laughs> maybe 45 minutes, but <laughs> probably the last eight minutes, you're staring at the tower trying to figure out where to put a block. I mean, if you went fast, if you didn't spend as much time thinking about it, you could probably speed that up. But yeah, probably about the longest a single build runs is about 45 minutes. Well, that that exception would probably be pretty pretty um, 
you'd be more of a happy rooting for everyone to not knock over the tower at that point. <laughs> There are times, unless you're playing with Sean, then of course you're cheering you know, against him. Well, and I've told people to uh, tag me on Twitter and take a picture of that thing if you can get 56 blocks on that tower because <laughs> I have tried and I mean, I get into the high 30s and I'm like shaking and flying. Yeah, I can't even play Operation. You should see me, it's hideous. Well, now, Tim, being at the one, one of three co-designers with this, um, you know, what was your original inspiration for this? Are you a particular fan of, of uh, dexterity games or stacking games? You know, what was sort of the, that genesis that led to this idea that eventually led to, to working with Sean? Honestly, it, it, I was driving home from lunch. Well, I was driving from lunch back to my office one day, and I was thinking about trying to design some games. At this point... I had never designed a game before. This is the first game that I designed, well, post elementary school. And uh, I said, you know what? It'd be really cool if you had a game where you drew cards and based on that card, you had to build a tower. And um, probably about three weeks later, I'd printed off a rough deck of cards with PowerPoint and had a friend who had a wood shop and he cut out the blocks for me. And oh, over the last funny. nine years, this is where we finally gotten to. <laughs> wow so i had only been aware of this from 2011 oh, i didn't realize the journey was that long yeah, it's on our end too we lost beth oh uh, you also too okay never mind z oh hey okay. i'm just trying to we're not super exciting beth is way more entertaining <laughs> to listen to and hear than, than tim or i <laughs> but, but she makes great hand signals <laughs> i have my daughter for technical support over here on the side <laughs> the good thing i'm in it huh <laughs> right. <laughs> well, oh, I want to thank you both for uh, for being able to join us and being able to give your perspective on this, yeah, we, this uh, long anticipated title. We played a game when we got the um, the proof from the factory. We sat down and played a game, and we almost got fifty six blocks on it. We we got up to I think it was forty four before we knocked it over. I don't know how you do it. I, I every time <laughs> I'm in the piece maximum and i'm always bumping the table with a knee or flicking it with a <laughs> I hate this game i mean i love this game it's one of <laughs> ever and it's so much fun <laughs> to play dexterity wise and you're gonna love it <laughs> i am just not good at it there we go yeah i've told several of my friends i think that i think this game is the best worst game ever, or maybe the worst best game ever. I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm like you, I'll start trying to move a block and they said, man, you're shaking. I'm like, yeah. All right, Tim. Well, well uh, Beth is giving me the, we're going to wrap it up signal because. Uh, I am going to, we're going to wrap that up. Yeah. Thank you both for being able now. to so join we're us. We're going to be quiet and let Beth give us Perfect. a nice run out. Thanks for having us on, Beth. We appreciate <laughs> yes, it. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, and and my thanks to Leanne as well. I know, um, you know, this was obviously a three-way effort. So, uh, congrats to her first, and also congratulations on designing your first game, which is remarkable and a huge accomplishment, no matter how long it takes. Thank you.